so today we're going to be doing the chatbot game and here's how the chatbot works you can click on this guy to talk and then he is going to be able to say that he's going to be able to ask us questions like what is my name my name is keller all right and now look he knows my name and am i okay no i'm not okay and so he responds based on me saying no do i want to go to the moon so if i say no he won't we won't go to the moon if i say yes we will and there we go we're on the moon that's pretty cool so today we're going to be working on that. So once you're in Scratch, go ahead and name your project or whatever else you want to call it. And then the first thing we're going to do is get into the sensing category of blocks right down here. And you're going to find the one that is ask. Uh, and then what's going to happen? It's going to ask, what is your name? And that's going to happen when this sprite is clicked. So if you go to events and find when this sprite clicked, all right, so when he's clicked, he's going to ask us what our name is. And then if you go over to looks, we can have him say things. One of the things we can have him say, so we can have him say anything we want, and we can have him say it for as long as we want. Right here at the very top, say something for two seconds, say hello for two seconds. You can drag that right underneath. And then you could say something like, hello there. So now if I start this game and I click on him, he asked me what my name is, I say Keller, but he just says, hello there. That's not really what we want. We want him to say our name. We want him to remember our name specifically. So there's this cool thing we can do. The Whatever we put in this ask, whatever we enter as the user, whatever I enter here, whatever I enter in this box, gets saved in the variable answer right over here. And we can toggle this. If you click this little check box, it'll show or hide. So if you notice when I start this game and I say cl and I click on him, he asked me what my name is. The answer is saved in here. We just need to access it in the rest of our program. To do that, we just need to drag this answer onto the say. And now if I say start and click on him, it'll use that variable for my output here. Of course, we don't really want him to just say my name back. We want him to say like, hi, Keller, or hello there, Keller, or wow, you're cool, Keller. To do that, we need to add a little more here. And the block, we're gonna hold on to this answer because we're gonna need it, the answer variable, we're gonna need it a little bit later. But the other block we need here, if you go down to operators, one of these is called join. And what join does is it takes the first part of a sentence, like hello there, don't forget to put a space at the end, and then we can join the answer to that. So now if I click start and I click him and I say Keller, Hello there, Keller. He takes the hello there, he joins it with the answer. He says that for two seconds. Cool. You can put a couple of these joins together. So I might want to have him say something like, hello there, Keller, you are so cool. Because I just don't hear that enough. People need to tell me that more. What I can do is I can put two joins together. Now I have the hello there, the hello, the hello there join, and then the answer. And then after that, I'll put an explanation point and then you are so cool. There we go. Now if I start it and I click him and I put my name, he says, hello there, Keller. You are so cool. So cool. So one thing I should bring up with this variable, this answer variable here, is that we have a bit of a problem. So I want the program to remember my name for a long time. I want it to always remember my name. Uh, but the problem is if we asked another question like, how are you? And then we tried to do this name thing again. Look what'll happen. I say start, I click on him, I put in my name, and it's Keller. He says, okay, hello there, Keller, you are so cool. And then he says, how are you? And I say, say, I'm good, or, or let's just say good. And now look, my name's no longer Keller. What happens is whenever I answer a new one of these questions, it overwrites this answer thing. It replaces it with a different with a different answer, with whatever the last answer was. So we might want to hold on to our name. That's a pretty useful thing to have. So to do that, we're going to store it in one of these variables. So just like when we did the ghost game, we're going to make a new variable. But the variables don't just have to hold numbers. They can also hold words. In this case, the word is going to be name. Now we can set name to answer. There we go. And then we will replace this one with name. That's just good programming practice. There we go. So now if I ran this again, 
and I click on him. He asks me what my name is, and he says my name correctly. And then he asks, how am I? And I say, good. And now he still says my name, right? So now I can use my name, or I could use, uh, or I could use this answer, or I could use both. There you go. All right, so we're gonna move on to one of the coolest parts of programming. Loops are pretty cool, but one of the other really amazing things we can do is what's called control statements, or you know, decision making. So we can have the program decide something based on the answers or input we give it. To do that, we're gonna add another question onto this. We'll take ask and we'll add the question, are you doing okay? And then we're gonna go over to control right here. And we're gonna use this thing called an if statement, this if then right here. We're gonna drag it right underneath. And this if statement is going to take, going to check if something is or isn't true. So for instance, we can check if our answer is equal to something. So here's my equals operator. If you go into operators, there's one called equals right here. And then if we go back to sensing, we can find answer. Because remember now answer is going to be something else now. And you're going to drag answer into here. So answer was your name, but now we're asking a new question. Now the answer is going to be whatever this is. Now the answer is going to be the result of whatever this one is. So if answer not equals 50, that doesn't make any sense. Let's say if answer equals good. Or, oh, yes. Are you okay? So if answer equals yes, then we'll do something. So for instance, we might say, that's great. And this will work. If I hit start and I click him, I can say my name. And then he can say I'm cool. And he can ask me if I'm okay. And if I say yes now, he'll say that's great. But if I don't say I'm okay, he'll say nothing at all because it didn't fulfill this little statement. It wasn't The answer wasn't equal to, to yes, so he didn't do this. But a lot of the times we're gonna actually want him to do something if the answer isn't yes. If the answer is yes, he responds to me, but if the answer is no, he just doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna get rid of that if statement. And instead we're going to use one called if else. So in this one, it's the same idea. If the answer is equal to yes, we're still going to say that's a great idea. But if it isn't, we're gonna go back to looks, grab another say, and this time we're gonna say, oh no, for two seconds. Now, when I click start and click on him, I can say, my name is Keller. I can say, now I can say I'm not okay. And look, he does something different. Now, I just decided partway through all this coding that I actually don't wanna use this sprite. So does that mean I have to click X and delete all my code and start over from scratch? Well, the good news is no. If you go to costumes, you can always delete your costumes here, and it won't let you delete the last one, but you can click this little plus here to choose a costume instead of a whole new sprite. And now I can find what I'm looking for. I don't know what this guy's called. Let's see, where is he? Like that. We can grab another one. He's called Giga, apparently. So we can pick more than one of these costumes. We can pick two, there's two of them. We can grab another, Giga C, and we'll get the last one too, why not? Giga D. All right, so now we have four different ways we can have this sprite look. I also forgot to set a backdrop, so let's go to the stage real quick and do that. I click on stage, I can click on backdrops, and I can choose a backdrop here too. And we'll choose, um, let's do this beach, this Rio beach. So it's a little weird to play this game and have him, when I say that I'm actually feeling terrible, he's just still there smiling. Like, what the heck? What a jerk. So we're going to have him change costume so he doesn't look quite so happy that I'm having a miserable day. And maybe he looks a little happier if I'm having a great day. So if we go to costumes, we have a few costumes here. So I think a good one to choose for him looking happy would be this one. So we'll do, uh, let's do this one. Let's do Giga B. So Giga B is happy. Giga D is sad. So we need to switch between those two in our code. So we can switch to, I showed you how to use next costume in the animated name, but this time we're not gonna use next costume because we don't want a random costume. We want a very specific costume. If he's happy, we want this costume here. 
Giga B. So we'll go to switch costume and we'll choose Giga B and we'll drag it right in here before he says this thing. He'll switch his costume to Giga B. And the same thing for else. If he says, oh no, we want him to use Giga D. So we'll switch costume to Giga D. Now if I play it and I click on him and I answer my name and I say, am I okay? And I say no. Now he looks upset, which is good. I don't want him to look happy that I'm having a bad day. Now we're going to look at changing locations so that we don't just have to stay on this beach in Rio forever. To change locations, the first thing we're going to do is add another backdrop. So if we go over to our stage here and choose backdrops, we can add another one. We might want to get rid of this first blank one. We can add another backdrop and I'll add the moon one because we're talking about going to the moon. And we'll click back on the Rio beach for now though. We start on the Rio beach. Now let's ask a question to set up going to the moon. So we'll go to sensing, ask another question. This one will be, I'm going to the moon. Wanna come? And then we'll wait for their answer. And now if the answer is yes, so in our controls, we're going to get an if statement. And we're saying if the answer is equal to yes. So operators equals. Then we're going to go to sensing and grab the answer. So if answer equals, and then we need it to be yes. If our answer is equal to yes, then we want to switch the backdrop to the moon. So we'll go to looks and we can do this thing in looks where we have a uh, change backdrop to right here. We have change backdrop to or switch backdrop to. So we can grab that right under here. And right now it's switching to the Rio beach, but we want it to switch to the moon if they say yes to this question. There we go. Let's start the game real quick and click on him. And you might be noticing a problem already. We'll fix it in a minute. But one of the problems we're having here is look, he's still frowning. And actually there's an even bigger problem. I'll show you in one second here. And I say, want to come to the moon? And I say, yes. Then we go to the moon. But then when I start my game again, now we're already on the moon. What the heck? So what we have to do is when this game starts over, there's some things we need to have changed. What needs to happen is that when this game restarts, what we should be doing is switching our costume back to the normal Giga, Giga A, and we should be switching our backdrop back to the Rio beach instead of the moon. So when we click start in events, when we click start, we're going to go to looks and we're going to change his costume back to A and we're going to change the backdrop back to the Rio beach when we click start. Now our game is all reset and we can start again. We can answer yes. And we can also answer no. And then we won't go to the moon. All right, so this project is basically done, but let me add on a few more things just for fun. So for one, if we don't go to the moon, let's use an if else here so that we can have something happen if you don't go to the moon. So let's go to control and grab an if else. Now, if the answer is equal to yes, we'll switch the backdrop to moon. Otherwise, we'll just hide our little giga character here. So, cause he's gone, right? He went to the moon. And let's do one th more thing. Let's make him really excited to be on the moon. Let's make him jump up and down a little bit. Now, remember, we did something very similar to this with our E in animated name. So if you guys remember what we did for that, we went to uh, we went to motion and down to change Y by because we're changing his height. He's jumping up and down. And we'll do something like, we'll make it a little lower this time. We'll do like three. And then I went to control and we got a loop, a repeat 10. We'll make this one a little shorter. Maybe we'll do a repeat five. And then I did the same thing again. Now, if you want to copy code, you can always right click on it and say duplicate. And there we go, it just copied the code I had there. And then this one, we go back down by negative three. Now, if I click on this, he does a little jump. That's pretty cool. So I would say we want him to not, not just jump once, but we want him to jump four times. So just like before in that animated name project where I put the forever loop around both of these loop, I can put another loop around these. And so now I can have this one do four times. So he'll jump four, he'll do this jump four times, repeated four times before we, eh, after we switch to the moon, like that. So now if we switch to the moon, we switch back to moon and then we repeat this little jump four times. 
Let's start this and see how it works. Oh, I have to click on him, that's right. And then we'll say yes. And then we'll say yes again. There we go, and now he does the little jump animation. I'm also gonna add in, we have another Giga. We have Giga C, who is a very happy one. So we'll throw that one in too. And one more thing I wanna do is when I start this game, it's very confusing what I'm supposed to do. So I'm gonna have him say something right in the very beginning. I'm gonna have him say, click on me for two seconds. That didn't work. Oh, why didn't that work, guys? I made a really stupid mistake here. So when this sprite's clicked, he says, click on me. That doesn't make any sense. We don't want him to say, click on me once he's already been clicked. We want him to say it when the game starts, right here in the very beginning. We want him to say, click on me. And actually, we want to happen last. We want him to switch the costumes and backdrops first. There we go. So that should work correctly. Now if I click start, he says, click on me. And now I know to click on him. And now we can play his game again. Don't forget to add in some sounds. Uh, I can think, let's pick it, let's find a sound for going to space. Ooh, boy, there's a bunch of them. There we go, let's use this one, I like this one. So, what we'll do here is, when we're going to space, if the answer is yes, and we switch back up to the moon right here, we can go to sounds, and we can start the sound, teleport to. Right here. Just to make sure everything's working correctly, very important to play test your games. And we'll say yes again. There you go. And that is how you create a chatbot game. So for your challenge, guys, I want you to create something totally new. So either add like a, a couple more questions onto this, like continuing to tell the story, or create your totally own chatbot game where you have your own decisions and your own characters making their own choices. See if you can do some of the same stuff we've done, and hey, see if you can add a little bit more onto it. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.